Welcome to the Saturday Morning Muse. I'm Andy Tempty, and today is Saturday, February the 11th, 2023. Happy Valentine's Day in advance. And some of you are panicking right now, going, oh my gosh, it's Valentine's Day. I better do something for my significant other. Uh, so, which brings us to the topic of the day, which is that of being intentional, living with intention. Now, being intentional is a phrase that's getting a lot of attention these days. I'm a huge fan, but what does it mean to be intentional? A quick internet search for definitions yields a dizzying array of outcomes, so it's probably easier to define what a life without intention is. The answer is in the lyrics to an old Bob Dylan song. The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. Living without intention lets the winds of change and uncertainty buffet you to and fro. Living without intention allows the shiny balls of distraction to pull you in myriad directions. Living without intention reduces the likelihood of leading a rewarding, meaningful, and fulfilling life in my humble opinion. We all want to be heard. We want to be seen, to be given respect and live with dignity. Living with intention improves the probability that one will be seen and heard. So let's say that you wake up one day and say, Living without intention is no fun. I thought that living a carefree, happy-go-lucky life would be the way to go. But here I am, stuck in a dead-end job with no idea of what comes next. This is a great step forward. But to move from where you are to living with intention requires some work. It is not possible to live without intention one day and begin living with it the next. So, what are the necessary conditions for living with intent? I'll give you a few steps. Step number one, define your purpose. Why are you here? Why do you exist? If you've made the decision to be a net giver in this life, it's necessary to know what purpose you'll strive to serve. Beware, answering this question requires time, a great deal of self-reflection and self-awareness, plus a willingness to engage with a coach or mentor who will ask the tough questions and hold you to account. Step number two, establish a vision for your future. Once you've defined your purpose, it's time to set your sights on the future. Where do you want to go? Is there an aspirational version of yourself that you'd like to turn into reality? What is your desired future state of being? My advice is to start small and then to continuously improve from there. It's okay to have big dreams, but for big dreams to become reality, we must crawl before we walk, we must walk before we run. To help craft your purpose and vision, I've developed the Personal Planning Guidebook that's available for free download here on my website. Just look for the link that says Guidebook. It's pretty obvious. Step number three, build your plan. Without a plan, entropy, which is the natural tendency for everything to fall apart or for everything to move toward disorder... Without a plan, entropy takes over and your dreams and aspirations remain locked away in the ether of dreams and aspirations. A big part of the planning phase that a lot of folks either minimize or ignore is the education and learning needs that must accompany the change that you aspire to make. Again, the Personal Planning Guidebook will be beneficial in helping you identify blockers, skill gaps, existing assets to deploy, and individual goals and milestones that will help you along the way. 
most importantly, draw an actual roadmap. I am here. I want to end up there. And these are the steps that take me there. Step number four, execute. This is the scary part where the planning becomes the doing. It takes real courage to break out of the status quo and do something different. The execution phase is where the rubber meets the road and is another reason why starting small and breaking your plan into bite-sized chunks is so important. Big, hairy, audacious visions don't come true overnight and one of the primary drivers of failure is biting off more than you can chew. Step number five, measure progress. During the planning stage, back in step three, it's important to identify quantitatively what success means. How will you measure progress against your vision? Determining a metric or two that corresponds to each milestone in your plan up front is important and helps you maintain a level of objectivity once the doing starts. If you don't measure progress, it's really easy for emotion to cloud your path. Step number six, evaluate and adjust. Remember the concept of sunk cost from economics? Sometimes things just don't work out. We learn, we pivot, we adjust, and we move on. Continuing to grind away against the wheel of futility or relying on hope that everything will magically work out is a one-way ticket to disappointment and disillusionment. It's highly likely that things will go wrong. Instead of getting frustrated and throwing in the towel, take a breath. Ask a series of whys. Be honest with yourself about what's not working and then move ahead. The only way in this life is forward, but it's important to understand that forward is almost never a straight line. Life is filled with potholes, loopbacks, and left turns. Perseverance, agility, and persistence matters. So, there you have it. A brief guide to living with intention. Living with intention is the byproduct of determining your purpose, painting a vision for your future, building a plan to get you there, and then getting after it. A neat trick that I've adopted is to either look myself in the mirror or sit quietly in self-reflection for just a few minutes each morning to remind myself to live with intention today. I found that this quick check-in does wonders to keep me on track. And it is my purpose to teach, coach, mentor, and inspire that forms the foundation for living with intention for me. Thank you so much for listening today. I hope you have a great weekend.